You know, we launched TED Talks for the World around seven years ago. It seemed like the stupidest idea that anyone had ever had. Essentially that I was putting um, taped lectures right. online. They would sort of look at me with this, this sort of pity. We felt that the ideas deserved a wider audience than they were getting. And so when we launched TED Talks, our, our true mission was to figure out how, how to better spread ideas through the world. What is TED? TED is a conference, sure. But it's more than that. It's an idea. Actually, a collection of ideas. And people. People and ideas. People with ideas. People who are here for a number of days to talk to other people about ideas. Those people also have ideas. And there's people here who help the people with ideas tell their ideas to other people. And we're gonna find out what happens when all of those people and all of those ideas get together in one place and start doing things with one another. One of the things we really pride ourselves on is how much effort we put into preparing speakers. So we don't just choose a speaker and put them on stage. We have a very deep editorial process, um, very similar to the way an editor and a writer would work together. When you give a talk at TED, there's a very specific format. Um, they want you to tell a story. They want you to engage the audience, which in science is something we don't normally have to do. And so they help us to realize the story and to come up with new imaginative ways that we can tell it. As an engineer and a computer scientist, we don't typically get a lot of training in, in how do you present yourself and present your work and tell a compelling story. Um, and that's been one of the, the most awesome things that I've been able to take away from this experience. It's actually extremely difficult um, to try and condense a decade's worth of work is actually extremely hard. So we were really trying to make the speakers rock stars, to shoot them with tight shots, with moving cameras, multiple cameras, so that we could get you know, a great edit. That's the kind of thing any filmmaker would do. But at the same time, we didn't want it to feel very false. We wanted it to feel authentic and real and intimate. And so there's a balance we're always striking in the, in the filming process. We don't cut out a lot because they sort of bring their own genius but we do sort of try to make them who they wanted to be when they stepped on stage, you know? So we don't really change them, we try to make them the best them. Things need to have a filmic layer, but less sweeping. To me, it's more personal, a little more rough around the edges. It's okay if you get a close-up of someone who's not beautiful, because keeping it sort of uh, as real and intimate is great because you just want to get out of the way of the idea and let people access that idea with as little barrier, a little film between them and the idea as possible. So what's the biggest challenge it's at, 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 a, you know, at a conference of this size? A lot of it is like the numbers game, you know. We have so many machines down there, so many moving parts that it's kind of a mathematical probability that something's going to fail. And so a lot of it is just making sure that uh, we have backup machines, we have backups of backups of backups because this time at the TED conference is so crucial for us. It's when we're getting all of our material that we're gonna to use to put TED Talks out you know, on the internet the rest of the year. So you guys are running Windows? Yeah. Is that, yeah. XP, this is all at an XP shop? Okay, the Media Cave is the official name for this? The, it is called the Media Cave. Was there any thought to actually doing a cave-like structure at any point, or? We thought about it, but we found that it was probably gonna to be too expensive. Too expensive, so too time just, consuming. Yes. So, yeah. okay, so and how many people do you have down here? How many workstations, how many people? You can give me rough estimates. Works, I mean, we think, we have, I think somewhere between 16 to 20 people. After each speaker gives a talk, we actually try to turn around their talk um, by putting them on a thumb drive so that they can actually have a copy of it to review okay. and to make sure they like what they're saying. Oh, okay, so if I'm a speaker and I, and I suck completely, mm -hmm. I can be like, don't put that online because yes. I hate it. Although that. in the history of TED, I don't think we've ever had a speaker say like, please don't put it Oh, that's put cool. I didn't, know, I didn't know that they actually got an option. Big production. A lot of pieces, a lot of moving pieces. It's a bit like a puzzle. A puzzle you've got to put together very carefully or the puzzle could explode and get glass in your eye because the puzzle's made of glass. Did I mention that? The fact that there are limitations here in terms of you're in a space, you know, it's, a, it's an auditorium, you've, only, you've got nine cameras, um, but is it, are you battling the limitations or, or is it, you know, do you like working within them? I think the limitations are exactly where the creativity starts happening. A lot of the speakers talk about what constrained them actually liberated them. 
I'm more excited about this TED than I've been in a while, and I think it has to do with the worldwide talent search that we did in 14 cities around the world, a kind of open call for speakers, which was very risky. So we have 33 speakers here who are chosen from those auditions, and they're bringing, they're just people we wouldn't have found any other way. At the heart of every TED Talk is a really passionate speaker. And I think what the great TED Talks tap into is this very um, primal way of connecting. Um, you know, a single person standing on stage, locking eyes with you, telling you what they believe in, um, can impact you in a way that almost nothing else can.